G'day, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at what's inside this Milwaukee drill. This is a fuel version, so it means it's got a brushless motor in there, and the specific it's an M18 FPD2. That's the version of this. So this is quite a new tool, I have used it a bit, but it is it is almost new. It's got a really nice life there, so when you're working, it will eliminate that surface. And in general, I really like these Milwaukee drills and nice battery. So won't look at the battery today, but maybe we can take that apart another time, but we'll have a look at what's inside this drill and the electronics with it. So I mean, there's quite a few screws around the side, on the front here, and then on the end, so I'll just dig in and take those apart. All right, there we go. So there's a lot of screws holding that together and all of them are really nice and quite long. So it took quite a while to get it undone by hand, but it's really good to see this is held together really well, really solidly, which is nice. And then we've just got this one side that pops off. So it's just the two clamshells that hold it together. I've only taken this one out for now. We'll see if we need to take the other one or we can see everything. But it's got a really nice thick plastic, a lot of bracing there and a lot of different ridges here as well for reinforcement and for things to mount to and then we've got this nice black over mold here as well for the grip this is really nice and grippy surface and then a couple of other extra bits on the side so that sits in the hand really nicely there's this half here so put that over there and then have a look at this you can probably pull some of this stuff out actually I might, I'll, I'll take these other two screws off and take this out completely out of the clamshell All right, so we're just left with that other side of the clamshell. So it's pretty much the same as this one, just obviously mirrored in the other way around. And this is really interesting to see. This little flap here, this, this would have been injection molded with the part, but the machining for that would have taken a long time to do. And to actually get that super thin, that would have been really expensive to do. So they usually put RFID tags on here to be able to identify the tool, but there's nothing in this one. So that's great. I haven't actually taken anything out, but it just means that this one hasn't got a little tracking thing in it. So either way, that's the two clamshells there. And this is just the, that reverse forward and reverse button. Well, not the button, but the assembly that'll move the actual button. So that just sits in there. All right, awesome. And then we've got the actual guts of the drill. So yeah, it's, it's nice. It kind of stays in that little shape of the drill. You obviously can't hold it and do anything, but these wires here are pretty, pretty thick. So they would hold the whole assembly together. Alrighty. So I won't go taking that gearbox apart because they can get really messy really quickly. And it's just a bunch of gears in there obviously arranged in uh, specific orientations to actually have different speeds so you've got speed one and speed two here you can flip this button and it pushes this little lever and changes that sort of gear orientation there and then you've got the clutch as well which is what happens is when you rotate this this out the front the higher the number that the tougher that clutch is holding it and it won't click and then you've got the drill mode and hammer mode there and i've already already gotten a bunch of grease on my hands so while that's sort of open we can have a look at the motor here so it's got six different windings around it and it is brushless as I've sort of said, uh, this being a fuel fuel line. There'll also be a little PCB on the side here, or either on the back or the front, and it'll be sensing 
the position of the stator in with respect to the ro the rotor with respect to the stator inside here because it'll have those different windings so that'll just be done through little hall effect sensors that will most likely be mounted to to this board here so i think that might actually just be them just there those two little bits below that elastic there there's two there and there's oh no that's it there's just those ones there so maybe the sensors on the inside here as well to actually do that all right so we'll put this back All right, so that clicked back in place. It, it, you got to get it aligned perfectly with the teeth, and there's also a lot of magnets on here, so it's trying to pull it in different bits and, and sizes. But there is that little wobble here, which I think once this is mounted in the case, the actual case will hold that motor in the right position and, and hold that in place. All right, let's pop back out again, so I'll put that back in. All right, that's good. I won't mess with that anymore. I'll just wipe my hands because I've got a bunch of grease on them. So the nice thing here to see is this is all obviously metal, the whole thing together. So the gears themselves will also be metal, but the casing around it is plastic. So that is holding it together. Yeah, this would be a lot of glass reinforcement in here to have it really strong um, and hard, but that'd be quite brittle. So if this could shatter with the right force applied onto it, and then we've got the actual motor itself. So we've got a lot of nice uh, coils there and that really thick wire, which is good because the thicker the wire, the less the resistance through that wire is and the more current can get pumped through. And also that just means that there's less heating going on as well with that wire being nice and thick. So we do have this as the motor rotates, these little fan blades here that'll circulate the air within it. So I think because that sits on the back, it's pretty closed off on the back actually. There's no intake on the back of this. It just takes it in from the side. So these, as, as this sits on the top, there's these little slide, uh, uh, these little holes here on the side that the air comes in and then that's just the button that actually just fell out then. So the air would get intaken in that way, probably channeled down through the handle, which is where all the electronics are, that we're producing quite a lot of heat as well. And then I think it just gets dissipated down through the handle and through the battery. Yeah, there's a couple little vent holes there on each side. So it gets sucked in here, cools the motor, travels down through the handle and goes out that way there. So speaking of, of which, we've got these electronics here. So everything is pretty much in, held it together in this white case. All right, come on. There we go, in this white case, all the electronics and then a heat sink on this side and then just a epoxy set in that. So if anything breaks, you aren't really getting any of this apart. All we can really see is obviously we've got the trigger here. So it's got thick wires going to it because this will act as a complete on off button so it'll it'll shut the whole thing off but also it'll just have a pwm it'll have a little wiper so as you press it the more you press it the higher that pulse width modulation signal is that's going to get passed down to this board here and then this board here will have a whole bunch of mosfets mounted to it most likely in a h bridge configuration uh meaning that so it's got this this will have probably three for three different coils on it to actuate it in, in, a, in that three phase fashion so it'll have four MOSFETs per coil and that'll allow it to go forwards and backwards on each coil. And then we just can see a couple of capacitors down here. So I can't see the value for them, but they would just be to provide a bit of filtering uh, from that battery as that comes in. Up on top of the switch, just here, this is little button. There you go, you can hear that click. So that is just gonna be the direction. So we've got one way We've got that center lock and then we have the other way. So when that is in the center, there'll be a little mechanical bit in there that'll prevent. Oh, actually there won't be, that's interesting. So it must be this here that then actuates that. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So that front tip there, that's gonna sit here. And as this divot here sticks out, it'll prevent this from sliding forward. So that's actually what's prevent what prevents the trigger from being pulled when that's in that center mode. I would have assumed this would have an internal thing. So as you turn this, it would have that little mechanism internally, but obviously it doesn't have gone with that extra bit there as well. Cool. And then, well, on the bottom, we've just got the terminals for the battery that pretty much connects. So positive and negative, and then there's a couple of other wires there, which will probably just be to talk to the actual battery and have some electronics on there as well. And might even have a thermometer as well. There's this extra wire here as well to, to measure that. Kind of likewise on the motor, I didn't say before, actually into the gearbox, we've got this little connector and these three wires here as well. So that could be a temperature sensor or something something like that going into the actual gearbox to sense the temperature within that. 
And then we've got a ground wire here as well. So this will just ground the whole assembly here. So if there's any static or any high frequency um, oscillation or anything like that that gets generated by this, that'll just ground it and bring it back through the board into the battery to, to complete that circuit and prevent any um, static discharges. I think that's pretty much it with it. I'll just show it a little bit more again so you can see the different wires and different bits coming together. Nice thing there to see is this is a really nice sealed bearing as well. So there was another one on the other side between the motor and the gearbox. So that will just hold the motor in really nicely. And that would slide into this back plate here where that groove is there. So that would sit. There we go. You can see that spin really nicely. Because this, this motor would be quite high speed. So that, that would be a high speed bearing. Same as the other one to take that. And then within the gearbox there will be lower speed ones and higher torque. Cool. The only other I think interesting thing that I can notice is you can see there's there's four pins here sticking out, but they've been covered with some sort of elastic or, or silicon. Actually, yeah, it's just like a silicon. It's quite rubbery surface. So maybe that was used for programming the board or for testing the board, um, troubleshooting it or something like that. As as they were manufacturing this, and the other thing down here, we've just got this little LED. So it's just two pin positive negative, just going to the LED that sits inside that handle. Awesome, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Consider liking it. And if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, then consider subscribing. Thanks very much. Have a good one.